Good afternoon, my name is Nico House, host of the political radio show Mikasa Sukasa, and I urge you all to join our one follow one dollar campaign. Um, now, there's been a lot going on, not only in the last couple of weeks, but really over the last year or so. And I think that a lot of us have kind of, maybe not everybody, but a lot of us have really harped on this last year thinking that this is the only time that a lot of these D's in, in politics and um, really a lot of the, the issues that are going on uh, overseas are that they're kind of recent. Um, things like Libya, for example, Syria. Um, I remember my uncle being in special forces and always being in Libya, and I actually had never thought anything of it. Um, I never wondered why my uncle was in Africa. I never wondered why they were always special forces always seemed to be there. And every you know every special forces guy, if you ever talk to him from the '90s, they were in Africa at some point. Um, there, there just been a lot happening, and t it wasn't really until Trump's travel ban, the recent one, the updated one that I started actually asking the same question myself, what exactly have we been doing? And can we learn from patterns that have been established recently that we actually can see now because of the information age that we couldn't see before? And what I found um, scared the living hell out of me. It really did. And I'm gonna explain to you why. So recently, Tr Trump made three major changes to the travel ban. One, he added Venezuela. That's weird for a couple of reasons. I'll go into those in a second. But two, he added Chad. Chad the country, not, yeah, not Chad from Charlie's Angels. Chad. Um, three, he took off Sudan. Which is also really weird because it's not like they've made like vast improvements in their, you know, in their situation politically. Now, Venezuela is, is, is was a weird one because he's blaming the fact that the, you know, their election integrity is the issue. Granted, they've had election integrity issues for quite some time because, well, the Department of State, um, essentially the Department of State that Hillary was one, running, was actively involved in destabilizing the region and, in, and, and then installing Nicolas Maduro. Um, but what's more so weird about the whole Venezuela ban is the fact that it's only the members of their government, which it seems like someone is attempting to kill all dialogue between our government officials and the government officials of Venezuela. Uh, and it makes it even scarier when you consider that the actual ban happened because of the petrodollar. Now, a lot of people believe that the petrodollar is just kind of like, you know, yeah, it's kind of, our economy's kind of based off the petrodollar, a little based off the petrodollar. Um, I will tell you this, it is not kind of based off the petrodollar. It is not a little based off the petrodollar. It is our entire existence as a world is really based around our our currency, the U.S. dollar, being based in this petrodollar. And I know exactly how to prove so. Now, once we once Maduro, in a very bold move, decided, hey, we're going to not use the petrodollar anymore. We're leaving it officially. They were immediately on the travel ban. Now, for those of you who don't know, there are a couple of other countries who tried to do this as well. Let's see, Syria, Iran, Iraq, uh, Iraq Yemen, Libya. Starting to see a little pattern here. Now, what it seems like, ladies and gentlemen, is that the petrodollar may be a bigger deal than what we had originally thought. And that maybe our currency isn't as sovereign as we would have liked, liked to think in the past. And that we are actually, that we are actually on the brink of one of the grandest economy crashes in history. 
not something that we can merely bounce back from by, you know, doing the same old, let's recreate some jobs, let's get us spending our economy. No, it's to the point where we're screwed. Like It's one of those, we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't situations. This is why. We know this because of the next country that was banned, and that was Chad. Now, I'm pretty sure that most of you have really never thought yeah, we got to watch out for those chatty and terrorists. We know that uh, they've always been on our backs. And no, no one has ever thought that. Me, least of all. Now, once I realized the proximity, what country was in close proximity of Chad, I started doing some research. For those of you who don't know, Chad is the country that most closely neighbors Libya. <laughs> Oh, it gets better. If you're wondering what name is going to come up next, you're absolutely correct. Chad has a very close relation in one way or another with Gaddafi, the dictator, if you will, that uh, the United States liberated as of October 2011. Now, what's scary about that is that the president that we had before in Chad, the United States installed. Uh, we supported them with military weapons, money. Our special forces actually helped to train that president. And that is why we were constantly overseas in Africa, because we were training their people to fight Libya. And it turned out, as always, that president that we installed actually was the president who committed all of the human rights atrocities, even more than Gaddafi. OK, so. Of course, he's ousted by a military coup, and the current president is the one who led that military coup. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we needed to ban Chad. A little, a little coincidental, no? A little coincidental. I'm gonna put it like this. When I saw that we banned Chad now, but while we were fighting Libya, we didn't ban Chad before. So what happened? We were fighting in Libya, I should say. So what happened, right? What happened? I said to myself, I wonder if uh, President, President Debbie, I know, it's, I know it's funny. Yes, his name is President Debbie. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, but that's just the gist of it. <laughs> but I wonder if President Debbie is any type of relationship with Gaddafi. I said, um, he better not be related to Gaddafi. He better not have worked with Gaddafi. Because I know, I know, I know I better not look up this man's name. And of course, sure enough, he graduated from the school, Gaddafi's Revolutionary Academy. He was trained by Gaddafi. He was trained by Gaddafi's men. He's the re he took over. He took over Ombre, the previous president's government, through military coup using tactics and leadership skills that Gaddafi gave him. Then he used Chadian troops in the Gaddafi army, the the, the Libyan army, that he wasn't supposed to do. Okay. Oh, but it gets so better, so much better. So of course. They were friends, President Debbie of Chad and Gaddafi of Libya. Of course they were friends. And we were trying to overthrow Gaddafi this entire time. So here's where it gets a little bit interesting. Now, if you don't know this, Chad and Libya are both part of the African Union. And the African Union actually established a peaceful way a peaceful way to uninstall Gaddafi for him to peacefully step down and establish a democracy that all of the African Union, for the most part, agreed upon. Gaddafi actually agreed to this because they believed that it was more important for to establish a democracy themselves rather than allowing uh, the United States, the UN, NATO, and all the Western countries to come in and try to dictate exactly how their governments should be ran because we already know how that ends. 
We don't. We never go anywhere to establish democracy. We go to establish. Uh, we go there to to destabilize governments. They know this, and there's a reason for that. So of course, even though they knew, and this is on record, by the way, they knew that Gaddafi had agreed to step down peacefully. Peacefully. They knew that the African Union all voted on this. So this decision was made democratically. They knew the Western world, they didn't, that the African Union did not want the Western world interfering in that uh, situation in Libya. And guess what? The United Nations, NATO, and the United States all decided, we don't care what you all want. We're gonna kill Gaddafi and destabilize the region anyway. And they went ahead and pulled the trigger. So of course, President Debbie of Chad is pissed at this point because he knows what comes next. And he has been very vocal in saying, you will not continue to invade our countries. Most of our issues in Africa have come from Western countries interfering in African governments, in African economy, and et cetera, et cetera, which we all know to be true. So of course, now the United States can't use Chad as a base to get into Libya. And it's just coincidentally enough, like I said, Chadian and President has been very outspoken about how he feels about the United States, about how he feels about the Western world in general, and how he feels about their interference in Africa. Well, you can't say that because we know what happened the last time. We know what happened the last time we let Libya by themselves, while when we let Syria and, and, and Yemen and, and, and all these other countries. Y'all tried to est establish an Arab Union Y'all try to go on the gold dinar, and we can't have that, especially because Chad is indeed on the petrodollar. And if Chad were to be involved in, in this, Libya, Syria, all of these countries that have the established petrodollar and enough gold to foundationalize the gold dinar, all of a sudden, all of our money is worthless. And we can't allow you to establish a, a, a democracy in Libya because y'all going to vote because y'all don't like us now because we've pissed you off enough. You're going to vote to establish the gold dinar and you'll be, have both of our currencies and ours will be worth a lot less than yours, especially as we transition to alternative energy. So we can't have that. So how about this? We'll take off Sudan. We'll take off Sudan. Guess where Sudan is? I'll make it quick. Sudan is right below Chad. We just put Chad on the ban list. And as the Chadian president, Debbie, has been saying, we don't want you to have, we don't want anything to do with the United States. We don't want the Western world in our country. Guess what happens next, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, yeah. He becomes the sitting chairman of the African Union, essentially helping to dictate exactly how much the, the, the United States can interfere without retaliation. And then he ends up on the ban list as almost as soon as he became. He's been the sitting president for 2016, 2017. It was established like with the, with the last three to four months. And of course, he's been very vocal and this is his punishment and uh, I'm pretty sure we know what comes next. Now, why is this scary? Well, I'll try to make this quick, ladies and gentlemen. It seems like the same fate of Libya, the same fate of Yemen, is the same fate of Syria, the same fate of Iraq, is the same fate, potentially, of Iran. We punished Venezuela for, for getting rid of the petrodollar almost within a day or two. It seems that we are in a big debacle. We've been trying to figure out why not go towards alternative energy? Why must we continue to frack? Even after we have a way to distance ourselves from OPEC, why are we still so reliant on them? Why do we continue to buy oil? Why do we make it the foundation of our economy? Why does Saudi Arabia continue to do the same? Why does Qatar continue to do the same? Why do we keep funding these countries who clearly are not behaving within our best interests? Corporations have a lot more money to make from alternative energy, which would create drop jobs because you have to build infrastructure, you have to maintain infrastructure, the energy is unlimited, so you're not worried about maybe one day the planet will be destroyed, and you're not worried about maybe one day we will run out. 
The truth of the matter is, once we got off of the gold standard, there were many people who were convinced that our money just became sovereign and that it was just, you know, we're, we're so reliable and the way we spend our money, that's, that's how we've been able to maintain. No, no, that's not it. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, if we leave the petrodollar, we are screwed. We're so screwed, in fact, that we've gone through great lengths over two to three decades to destroy every single dictator, would-be president, country, not replace, we, we reinstall another dictator. We do this on purpose because for countries like Venezuela, Syria, Libya, Chad, we don't want them to have democratic governments because they will realize the power that they have to end our economy. And the Western world in general, like the United States is very aware of this, but it's not just us because we're not the only ones who participate in these, these uh, military coups. We're so reliant on the petrodollar that we've been destabilized. Those, that's why the seven countries that, we, that, that, that Wesley Clark talks about, General Wesley Clark, that we're going to invade, that we're almost done, I think there's like one left. The seven countries, we're going to form a union. This, those seven countries, we're going to create the gold dinar. And this is our response. We are so reliant. It's not about, it's, it's the oil situation is about currency. We would be obliterated economically. And along with that, the rest of the world would be obliterated. There are a few countries who would not. But the modern world would fall. And there are countries who are okay with that because they can rebuild it in their own image. So we literally have, if we went to alternative energy, that would be the end of the, of the world. And that is why they're putting up such a fight. A fight that I don't think even Bernie Sanders nor Barack Obama, even though I'm not a fan of his, I don't think that any, any people think that you can just, we're, we're sovereign. Our currency is not sovereign. Our currency is reliant on making sure people die to keep our currency foundation alive in the petrodollar since we've left the gold standard. This is scary. And this is one of the times that I actually am legitimately fearful because I don't even have a solution. You know, I'm not the one to present problems without solutions, but I have no solution for this. We can go to a resource-based economy, but who would want to be on a resource-based economy when we have, really dominantly, all the resources that everyone has to buy? We can grow anything in the United States, and same thing in Brazil. Nobody's going to want to trust us on a resource-based economy either. We have a lot of thinking to do, but I hope that this video gives you some perspective on just how deep into this that we are we're, we're, we're in some shit right now, to be quite blunt. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. And always remember, find your balance. Peace.